This is Garrett Chobi, and today we'll be discussing a case of functional endoscopic sinus surgery uh, in a primary fashion for a case of chronic rhinosinusitis without nasal polyposis. As you can see on this patient's CT scan, there is diffuse uh, disease throughout. This is a CRS without polyp patient. The most prominent portions of the disease are in the maxillary and ethmoid sinuses, but there's also some in the sphenoid and the outflow tract, the frontal sinuses as well. It should be noted that this patient has undergone appropriate medical therapy, including uh, multiple courses of oral antibiotics as well as steroids, and long-term use of saline rinses as well as topical steroid sprays, however, remain quite symptomatic. Here we are in the left nasal cavity, gently medializing the middle turbinate and creating a relaxing incision in its basal lamella in order to medialize that well. This is a pediatric backbiter identifying the posterior aspect of the unsnip process, as you can see here, uh, and creating a uh, backbiter incision in the inferior aspect of that uh, in order to help us identify the natural os of the maxillary sinus. This is being taken back towards the maxillary line, which is its attachment point. And here we are the maxillary ball probe gently reflecting and lifting out uh, that unsnip process. This is with a 30 degree uh, angled endoscope. We're then using a 45 degree through cutting instrument in order to remove the reigning portion of the unsnip process, as you can see here. Now we will begin to look for the natural os of the maxillary sinus. Here we are with a 30 degree endoscope and gently reflecting the inferior remaining portion of Unsen, as you can see here. Then with a suction, we're carefully looking for this natural loss. This is always in an off midline or parasagittal position, as you can see here. Once that's identified, we then will dilate it posteriorly with a maxillary ball seeker, as you can see here. And then expand this more posteriorly with through cutting instrumentation. Here are the straight through cut, uh, expanding that posteriorly. In general, I take this back uh, very close to the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus. We'll then use a right-going uh, Stomberger downward punch to bring this uh, down towards the shoulder of the inferior turbinate. And then we'll come in with an adult backbiter, taking that from that uh, inferior incision you made with a Stomberger down punch back towards the natural os. It's important to bring this uh, and curve this upward as you come towards the natural loss in order to remove the intervening portions of uh, that medial wall of the maxillary sinus. After it's been loosened, then we'll trim that with a uh, microdebreeder, as you can see here, a 40 degree microdebreeder. And once that's trimmed completely, uh, you can see that you have a nice teardrop shaped antrostomy being with that natural loss. At this juncture, we'll turn our attention towards the more superior aspect of the unsnip process, as you can see here. And we're coming in just behind that with a uh, frontal sinus pediatric keratin, taking on the last bit of that uh, more superior attachment. We will leave a bit of the most superior part in order to help guide our frontal dissection later on. We will now turn our attention towards the ethmoidectomy. Here we are identifying the ethmoid bulla in its natural outflow tract, which in the posterior and inferior aspect just in front of the basal lamella. We're fracturing that forward there with a uh, maxillary ball probe and then using a 45 degree through cut to take down the face of the ethmoid bulla. When dissecting through the ethmoid bulla, the goal is to identify the lamina papricia safely, which will guide further dissection as you work uh, more posteriorly. And here we are using a micro debris taking down more of the face of that as well as some additional polypoid mucosa. And there we are inside uh, the ethmoid bulla itself. You can begin to see that lamina papricia on the lateral aspect within the cell. And here we are taking down the more superior aspect of the cell with a two millimeter upgoing kerosene, working parallel to the orbit and taking down the rest of that uh, face of the ethmoid bulla. At this point, we're gonna cross through the basal lamella towards the posterior ethmoid cavity. We've elected to use our relaxing incision to cross through that area. Then here we are with a two millimeter kerosene taking down that basal lamella from uh, medial to lateral. And again, looking for that lamina papricia as we work laterally in this area. This can be done with through cutting instrumentation uh, or a kerosene as you can see here. And once that tissue is a little bit more malleable, we can then use a micro debreeder uh, to trim that loosened tissue. There's more polypoid disease here in the posterior ethmoid cavity as you can see in this particular case. 
although I would still consider this to be a uh, CRS without polypation. The main goal in coming through the basal lamella is to identify the superior turbinate. You saw the edge of it just a moment ago. And that will uh, guide your posterior ethmoid dissection and your sphenoid dissection to come. As you can see here, we're already looking at the posterior ethmoid roof. We're going to trim a little bit more of the lateral aspect there of that transition from the maxillary sinus to the ethmoid sinuses, as you can see here, to truly uh, well expose that uh, lamina papricia in its transition. Here we are in the posterior ethmoids, taking down additional partitions with the upgoing tumular kerosene, uh, transitioning this area towards the uh, ethmoid skull base, as you can see here. And then here we are with a 45 degree through cut, again, taking down additional partitions here in the posterior ethmoid cavity, uh, identifying and skeletonizing the skull base. And as you can see here, you can see skull base behind us and skull base in front of us. So here we are taking down that intervening partition to get that nice exposure of that uh, ethmoid skull base. At this juncture, we'll turn our attention towards the sphenoid sinus. Here we are just medial to the superior turbinate where that os always lives, identifying that with the assistance of navigation. And then we're going to trim this superior turbinate just to the level of the natural os, preserving the more superior portion of it, as you can see here. Once that uh, is trimmed back, we're going to dilate the natural os, that's sphenoid sinus, with a J curette. As you can see here, we're dilating that in a inferior and lateral fashion in order to get an instrument in there that can fit and begin to open up this sinus. Again, you can see we're preserving the superior aspect of the superior turbinate in order to maximize our uh, ability to have postoperative olfaction. Here's a sphenoid sinus hoseman punch. We're bringing that uh, from the natural os over in a medial and lateral direction, as you can see here, uh, beginning to widely open this sphenoid sinus. As you can see in this case, there is a bit of an anode cell of that posterior ethmoid cell above it. So we will work to bring the uh, floor of that anode cell and continuity of the sphenoid sinus to maximize uh, that sphenoid sinus opening. Here we are with a pediatric 45 degree through cut, taking that uh, floor of that anode or the roof of the sphenoid back further in order to maximize that opening and bring the skull base uh, and continuity from the sphenoid into the posterior ethmoids. And as you can see with this through cut, if you feel behind them in a closed fashion, you can tell the depth of that partition in order to take a thorough bite uh, across it as you work through this area. You can also see a nice uh, optical crowded recess within that sphenoid sinus just behind our posterior to where we're working now. Here we are taking down the last bit of the maxillary sinus to truly open that retro maxillary space in order to have that lamina papricia truly skeletonized as you can see here. Again, cleaning up the last bit of the ethmoid partitions here with the micro breeder in order to have uh, everything nice and widely open and fully skeletonized. At this juncture, we're, we will turn our attention towards the patient's frontal sinus after all their sinuses have been completed. What you can see here is we're identifying that there is a super agar cell there and a the natural alpha tract of that frontal sinus is just behind that super agar cell as you can see here. We're identifying that with the assistance of computer navigation. We'll then come in with a frontal sinus curette into that natural outflow tract and begin to collapse that super auger cell forward, as you can see here, and widely expand that frontal sinus outflow tract. We're currently using an angled telescope, as you can see here. We've taken on some more of the axilla in order to maximize our access to this area. And there's that polyploid opening into the true frontal outflow tract there. We're now coming in with a pediatric frontal kerosene to remove uh, the last portion of that super auger uh, cell, as you can see here. And again, expand that axilla a little bit more because you're having some difficulty visualizing that frontal in order to maximize our visualization and access. We're now removing polypoid disease within the frontal outflow tract itself with a uh, frontal pediatric shaver, as you can see here. And then coming in with a frontal sinus hoseman punch to widely expand the floor of the frontal sinus as we work towards the frontal beak anteriorly and medially. We'll continue to bring that, med that opening more medially as you work towards the uh, axilla of the middle turbinate and the middle turbinate attachment point. And then expanding that anterior floor of the frontal sinus again, as you can see here with the frontal uh, pediatric kerosene. And then here we are cleaning up the base of that frontal sinus where there's a supra bullar cell pneumatized uh, just behind the true frontal alpha tract, as you can see here, and taking that down towards skull base and expanding that uh, towards that base of the frontal sinus, as you can see there. 
this patient does not have low hanging anterior arteries, but even if she did, this would be uh, just anterior to that particular area. And here is a frontal sinus front to back through cut, taking down the remaining portion of that uh, partition. And finishing up the medial aspect of that frontal sinus opening uh, completely there with a frontal sinus uh, hoseman. During comprehensive endoscopic sinus surgery, key points include the following. Maximizing visualization by minimizing bleeding during the case. This can be with patient positioning, as well as topical medication, including 1 to 1,000 epinephrine, as well as keeping the blood pressure and heart rate lowered. When performing maxillary sinus surgery, it's important to ensure the natural os is included in the maxillary entrostomy, and this also goes for the sphenoidotomy. It should also be the goal to have complete skeletonization of the skull base and the lamina when completing a comprehensive sinus surgery and ensuring that you do so will give you the, the best uh, post-operative outcome. Lastly, one should rely on anatomic landmarks in surgical skill for dissection and confirm anatomy with navigation, but not rely on navigation as a primary identifier of anatomy.